Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a simple synthesizer out of the sign bank module in Reactor. If you like this tutorial, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm putting out a new Reactor tutorial every week. Alright, so to begin I'm going to create a sign bank module inside of its own macro. So the sign bank is basically a collection of sign oscillators where you can set the pitch, the amplitude, and the phase for each oscillator individually and they get mixed together and sent to the L and R outputs of the module. So this top input here specifies the number of sign oscillators we're going to have. So I'm just going to use a constant of 32. Um, you can really choose any number you want here, but I find 32 is usually enough to get a lot of stuff done, and it doesn't use very much CPU. All right, so since we have 32 oscillators, and each oscillator has its own amplitudes and its own ratio, uh, which is the frequency and its own phase, um, it would be impractical to have inputs on this module for those parameters for 32 different oscillators. So instead we have a system where uh, we first have to choose the index for the oscillator that we're going to change the parameters for. And then we can send inputs to the ratio, the amplitude left, the amplitude right, and the phase parameter. And finally, when we're done with that, we have to send an event to the apply input at the very bottom. And so another issue that comes up is that not only is it impractical to have all those inputs on the reactor module itself, but it's also kind of impractical to expect that your user is going to want to have a synth with hundreds of knobs and have to turn, you know, dozens of them in order to get the sound that they want. So we also have to come up with an easy way to program all of the values that we want into the sign bank. And to use that, I'm going to use a couple different modules um, in conjunction with each other. We're going to use an iteration module and an event table. So we're going to use the iteration module to set the index of the sign bank and also to read out the values from our event table. And the way I'm going to set it up, we're going to read out the entire event table and write it to the sign bank whenever we get a new MIDI note. So I'm going to connect a MIDI gate to a separator module. And anytime we get a value that's greater than zero from the gate, uh, we're going to get an output from the high output of the uh, separator module. So whenever we have a new MIDI note, I want to send a value of 1 to our iteration module. And what the iteration module does is it sends out a number of events that we can specify, and each event increases in value by the number at the ink input. So each event is going to increase by a value of 1, and we're going to have 31 extra events. So that means we're going to have a total of 32 events at the output here, numbered from 1 to 32. So we can use the outputs from the iteration module to set the index of the sign bank and then read values from our event table to control our sign oscillators. And we're going to use an order module to make sure that we set the index before we start changing the uh, sign parameters. And finally we can set the gate output of the iteration module to the apply of the sign bank and that'll send an event when the iteration is done happening and it'll just apply all the changes that we made at once. Alright, so we can set the pitch of the sign bank just using a simple uh, note pitch module and the way reactor works is it's going to send the pitch event gets sent before anything comes out of the gate module 
And that means that the pitch will get applied by the iteration that happens directly after we get a new pitch value. And a lot of people get tripped up by this because it kind of seems like you shouldn't need to apply the pitch to the oscillators, but you do. So if the apply input doesn't get an event after the pitch changes, um, the pitch actually won't change for the output of the module. All right, so now let's load up our event table. And I've been working with these a lot lately, so I'm going to move pretty quickly. We're going to set the table size to 32. And each value is going to specify the amplitude of one of our oscillators. And I'm going to use a decibel range here. So I'm going to have a minimum value of 96 and a maximum value of 1, or 0, sorry. And we're going to translate the output into an amplitude using the exponential A module, which translates from decibels to amplitude. And we can run the output of that directly into the AL and AR inputs of the sine bank. I'm just going to set the amplitude of um, the left and the right sides to the same value. And I'm not really trying to get too fancy with this tutorial, obviously. All right, so now let's read our values from the event table. This is a little awkward, and you know it causes a lot of bugs and frustration, I think. Um, the event table has an index that starts at zero, which means you can read out the first value in the event table at index zero, uh, which is a really common thing in computer programming, and it's the way it should be. But the sign bank starts with an index of one, so it kind of creates these weird problems when you're using uh, both of them at once. You have to subtract one from the value of the index to read from the event table properly. And, you know, if you forget to do that, you can just end up with these baffling problems. So something to keep in mind is the base of the index for the modules that you're using. And once we've set the index of our event table, we can read out by sending an event to the R input. And we're almost done. Now all we need to do is add an um, in a envelope. And I'm just going to make a really simple one. Use the create control commands to give us our attack, decay, sustain, and release knobs. And we can multiply the output of the envelope by the sign bank. And the last thing I'm going to do is add a, s a amplifier. And this is just so we can bring the level down a little bit because we're adding together all these different sine waves and they have a tendency to build up and get quite noisy. So we can use the level knob just to bring down the amplitude a little bit. So this is just a very basic example of how you can set up all the different parameters that you need for a sine bank really quickly. And if you wanted to, you could easily have a separate event table for the uh, amplitude for the left and right sides, for the phases, and for the ratios even, which control the frequencies. I've left the ratios entirely disconnected. And basically, if you do that, they set up in a very rational fashion where uh, each one has a frequency value that is directly related to the incoming pitch and that just makes it really easy to create harmonic sounds um, as I'll show you in just a moment. So as I've been monologuing I'm just making a bunch of changes to the interface here and the last thing we want to do is set the table draw mode on for our event table and also set the clip on so that the values clip when you reach the end of the table. All right, so by having a lot of amplitudes turned up, it's easy to get kind of plucky sounds. And if we make the amplitudes a little more sparse, we can get kind of a more metallic sound.
And with a little practice, you can get a wide variety of sounds out of this. All right, uh, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please check out our website and be sure to tune in again next week. And thanks for watching.